I'm Jordan Belfort, and this is Sales School. People often ask, they say, you know, Jordan, one of the, the top three struggles, the top pain points, top three, that people face in the world of sales. I'll tell you exactly what they are. Take me the second. Number one, they're not getting enough leads. This is huge. I don't think people, salespeople or companies understand the importance of having not just a lead, but the right type of leads in your pipeline. And then for the salesperson to know how to essentially find out if those leads are truly qualified. That's number one. Number two, they don't have a coherent strategy once they actually get someone on the phone or that face to face with a person. In other words, as I said, once you get that lead, well, then you have to actually see if there really are a lead, but also, what do you do after that? How do you actually take someone who's at a relatively low level of certain, they don't know everything about your client, how do you take that person and make them so certain that you are the right person to deal with, the right product to use, right company behind me? How do you do that? It's a huge problem. And number three, obviously, not enough closed deals. First takeaway, right? How do you increase your closing rate? Well, let me just tell you what the straight line is, how it works, right? On some level, what the straight line is, it's a backwards looking system. Meaning, imagine if you were to go to the end of the sale and say, okay, well, I just closed the sale. What had to line up? What things had to line up for the prospect who now became my client to say yes? Well, as it turns out, there are certain core elements, five in fact, that have to line up in every single sale. And look at these elements as almost numbers to a combination lock. You know one of those old fashioned safe crackers? They you know, go up to a lock, they put the ear to the tumbler, they spin it one way, they hear a click. That's the first number. What do they do next? Okay, first number. What do they do next? They spin the opposite way. They hear a click, they get the second number. And the third number, fourth number, and so forth. And when all those numbers line up, they pull down the handle, click. If they got the numbers right, the lock opens. You crack the safe. Well, that's how people actually make decisions about buying. There are these numbers, actual levers in their head. And when a salesperson can have those five levers lined up in the right way, at the right level, bam, you can actually get anybody to buy. The straight line essentially is a turnkey blueprinted system that shows you what to do first, what to do second, what to do third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all the way so that at the end you've lined up those five numbers in exactly the right number, exactly the right order, at exactly the right number, and bam, everybody who would buy has bought. Now notice what I just said there. Everyone who would buy, there are some people who simply aren't buyers. You're not gonna close those people. In fact, through straight line prospecting, we're gonna weed most of those out to save you the time and heartache of that. But the point is, is that what you will know in your heart with the straight line is that when someone doesn't buy from you, after you've made a presentation, you'll say, you know what? They wouldn't have bought from anybody. That's important because what happens with salespeople is imagine how dejected you would get if you said, you know what, even when I get a great buyer real, who wants to buy, I don't know how to close them. What's the point of working? Why make more calls? Why go out and knock on more? What's the point of it all? See, when you learn the straight line and you have that confidence that, you know, when I get in front of the right person, oh boy, I know I'm gonna close them. You are, literally your inner world starts to line up in all the right ways and it impacts then the outer world, your confidence, your ability to deliver the straight line. It's a one-two punch and you soar to success. That being said, how do you do that? What's the first step? Well, the first step of the straight line system is that you literally have four seconds to position yourself the right way in the eyes of the potential buyer. People judge you on sight in an instant. And by the way, on sight, that could be me when they hear your voice on the phone. You literally have four seconds 
before the potential buyer rips you apart, judges each piece, and then puts you back together based on how you're perceived. If you're perceived the wrong way, good luck trying to close anyone. If you're perceived the right way, well, guess what? You're 80% there. You've set yourself up for massive greatness. What is the right way? I'll tell you. In those first four seconds, you must be perceived as being number one, sharp as attack. Number two, enthusiastic as hell. Number three, an expert in your field, a force to be reckoned with, an expert. And by the way, in number three, herein lies the true secret. As human beings are built, we seek out experts to solve our problems, to help us get back into control, and we've been conditioned to think and act that way since we're yay big. When we were young, our parents took us to the doctors, we saw the diploma on the wall, we were told they're very special people, and even our parents deferred to them because they were experts. We defer to experts. And guess what? Now, I have to go quick here because I want to give you massive value. When someone defers to you, what does that really mean? That means they hand you control. Once you have control of the encounter, you will be shocked at how easy influence becomes. See, if you're not in control, if they believe that you're a novice, guess what? The prospect tries to take control. Once that happens, well, think of it this way. Just hear me. Assume, yes, Jordan's right. There are these five core elements. If I could line up these five core elements, then I could close someone. If they're closable, right? I could every time, right? Good luck trying to line up those five elements if the other person's in control of the conversation. See, there's only one real way to line them up. There's one best strategy. See, there's a motto we use with a straight line. In fact, it was a thought that popped into my head that first night I invented the straight line. It was a thought that changed the lives of millions of people over the world. It was this, every sale's the same. You're like, what? How could every sale be the same? Every sale is the same. Now, yes, people have different needs, different values, different beliefs, different pain points, but that's not what I'm talking about. What is the same are those five core elements. They must love the product at a very high level. They must be very certain that the product makes sense to them. They must trust and connect with you, the salesperson. They must trust and connect with the company that stands behind the product. Number three. Number four, some people have what's called very high action thresholds. Their beliefs about buying stop them from making good decisions. We must lower the action threshold. And number five, address any lack of pain that might exist. Meaning, are they feeling in control or out of control? People have a tendency to go into denial. They block their pain. With the straight line system, we elegantly wake that pain up. And those five elements, by essentially lining them up in the right way, magic starts to happen. You start closing people who would always in the past slip away. And you get rich as a result of that. Let me get even more specific now. One thing I could teach you right now, that's just general, that was just framework, right? You can't really, that's a wow, great, how do I? Now let me give you something you can use. I, but I had to say that to get to this, right? Tonality. What you say, the words, yeah, they matter. But the tonality is the secret weapon of influence. Meaning, I could say to you, watch, and this is just right out of the gate. I say, let's say I'm cold calling on the phone. And I say, hi, my name is Jordan Belfort with XYZ Company. Is Mr. Smith there? Click, you'll never get it done right there. They'll say, nah, you know, hi, hi, Mr. Smith, this is Jordan Belfort calling from XYZ Company. That's called declaratives. I make statements. Hi, my name is Jordan Belfort calling from XYZ Company. How are you today? Flat, 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 right? Now listen to this. Hey, it's Jordan Belfort calling from XYZ Company in Los Angeles. How you doing today? You're like, what? Who? It's called phrasing a declarative as a question. Listen, hi, I'm Jordan Belfort. That's one way. Hi, I'm Jordan Belfort, downbeat. Now it's this, hey, I'm Jordan Belfort. You're like, what, who? <laughs> I phrase this good. From XYZ Company? You're like, XYZ, do I know? 
in Los Angeles, three uptones. You're like, who, what do I know? Now what happens is, is that when you phrase a statement, a declaration, but you phrase it as a question, it causes that, you know that spinning wheel of death you get in your computer when the, the, the essentially the, the, the um, RAM is out of memory. So it short circuits. And there's people saying, what, who, who's supposed to see? As you speak, whether you're selling or just a normal conversation, you speak to someone, and then as they're listening to you, they are narrating their thoughts back and they're saying, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, oh, he's an idiot. Yeah, oh, yeah, I agree. They're agreeing. They have this whole independent, you know, it's that. think about what you do. You have your own little monologue going on as someone's, so you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you want an idiot. I want a moron. Well, how do I get this? That's what's happening. When you phrase a declarative as a question and you say, hey, Jordan Belfort calling, you're like, who's that? What? They start. Talk, well, do I know this guy? I hope I'm not out of the loop here because my mommy told me it's really bad to be out of the loop and to be rude not to remember. They think that you're supposed to remember you. And just like that, you short circuit someone's inner monologue. You stop them from narrating against you. Instead of saying, oh yeah, not actually click. They're like, yeah, okay. And bam, just like that. You say, hey, how you doing today? Then you use another term, like, like, how you doing today? Not, how you doing today? Like, how you doing today? That's like your regular. People say, oh yeah, how you doing today? Meaning, you know that I know, that I know that you know. They don't really care how you doing today. I'm just saying because it's a perfunctory greeting. That's how most people say, how are you today? Versus, how you doing today? You're like, wow, he really wants to know. See, every word I say has certain tonalities stacked onto those words. And what happens is, I start taking over the person's monologue. So instead of it narrowing against me, we're saying, oh God, how do I get off the school? I don't want this thing. They're like, oh yeah. And before I know it, they're in my magnetic zone and I am now into the next step of the straight line, which is now to start asking questions to gather intelligence. That's your first take. Listen, you just do that. Start phrasing declaratives as questions. This is like, a little speck of knowledge of the straight line, and you'll get 10% bump in compliance in just getting through the first one. Probably, probably 40% bump if you could do it well. That's how powerful that one takeaway is. I'll say it one last time to move on to the next takeaway, right? You say, hi, I'm Jordan Belfort, calling from XYZ Company in New York. How are you today? The guy's like, not actually click. <laughs> oh my God, you know what he's saying? Oh my God, another salesman, gee, well, I gotta give it, how do I get off this? Versus, Hey, Jordan Belfort, calling from XYZ Company in New York. How you doing today? He's like, uh, okay, am I supposed to? Yeah. Wait, right now, Jimmy, am I up? Then I go on to all the other. Listen, there are 10 core tonalities that I spoon feed you in that module. It's the module number four. Show you exactly how to use them, when to use them, in every situation. And once you use them, you will be blown away and how easy influence becomes. That will literally make your closing rate soar on its own.